Welcome to Chemical Process Safety. This video is about flow of liquid through a hole in a tank. Last time, I derived the source model for the general situation of flow of liquid through a hole. Recall that the goal is to estimate how much chemical would be lost in the event of an accidental release. To refresh your memory, this was our equation for QM, the mass flow rate of liquid through the hole. In the generic scenario, this flow rate is constant with respect to time. However, if the hole is in the side of a storage tank, the draining will reduce the height of liquid remaining in the tank, and therefore reduces the hydrostatic pressure as the spill proceeds. Depending on your perspective, this could be either a good or a bad thing. It's good because the intensity of the incident decreases as time goes on, which is obviously better than intensifying. But it's also bad because the spill is worse at the very beginning, before you've had time to react. The derivation of this source model starts again with the mechanical energy balance. Except this time, let's define point 1 to be the upper interface of liquid in the tank. Point 2 is still directly outside the hole. We are still talking about liquids, so incompressibility means we can again change the integral to a delta. Furthermore, the pressure outside is atmospheric, and the pressure inside the tank is some value P gauge. Therefore, the pressure difference is just negative P gauge. Next, although the fluid at the upper interface is moving downward as the tank drains, we will assume that the velocity is negligible compared to the exit velocity. We'll also define the height difference between the top interface and the hole to be HL. Keep in mind that HL depends on time, and we'll come back to this in a moment. Just like we did before, I'll account for friction with the discharge coefficient, so I'll cancel it for now, but I'll come back to it later. Finally, there is still no shaft work, so the last term cancels. Solving for exit velocity and reintroducing the discharge coefficient yields the following expression. Exit velocity equals C1 square root of alpha times square root of 2 PGGC over rho plus 2 HLG. Once again, I'll do the same thing I did last time, replacing C1 square root of alpha by C0. This holds the same meaning as it did previously something between 0.61 for a rough, jagged hole, and 1 for a smooth nozzle. This is my final expression for exit velocity. But again, remember that HL decreases with time, therefore the exit velocity decreases with time too. This makes intuitive sense, but this will be a minor challenge mathematically. Getting back to the main question at hand, how can we determine the total amount of material lost? Once again, the answer is found by applying a good old material balance. This time we need an unsteady state balance because of the time dependence. There is no reaction happening, well, hopefully at least. So there is no generation or consumption terms. The balance is just accumulation equals input minus output. But actually, there is no input, so that term cancels as well. The accumulation is the time derivative of mass, and the output is minus QM, the mass flow rate. It's good practice to plug in the expression for QM so we don't accidentally treat it as a constant. Remember that mass flow rate is density times volumetric flow rate, and volumetric flow rate is velocity times the area of the hole. So that we can separate variables more effectively, let's also express mass as density times the volume. Except here, volume is the cross-sectional area of the tank times HL. Since we are now tracking two areas, pay careful attention to the subscripts here. AT is the area of the tank, and AH is the area of the hole. Next, we can plug in that expression for velocity that we just derived. In case you need a refresher, this was that expression. Once I plug this in, everything is now constant except for HL, which is now the dependent variable. I can separate the variables and integrate. I'll leave the details for you to practice, but I'll give you the hint that it involves U substitution. Here is the result you should have gotten. With this equation, you can answer several key questions. For example, you could calculate how long it would take to drain the tank entirely. Well, at least to the hole, since the spill would cease when the liquid falls to hole level. You would do this by setting HL equal to zero, and then solving for T. Here is the result. You could go one step further, and set PG equal to zero, if you're analyzing a tank that is vented or open to the atmosphere, since the pressure inside will be atmospheric. You could also rearrange this equation and solve for HL as a function of T. You can then obtain an expression for the mass flow rate QM in terms of T, which is quite handy. 
Finally, you can integrate that function with respect to time to obtain the total mass lost. Looking at this expression, we can see that the total mass lost is a function of the density, tank size, discharge coefficient, the initial height of fluid above the hole, the area of the hole, and of course the time that the spill was occurring. Isn't it neat how you can answer these process safety questions by applying fundamentals?